Hello everyone, Steven here from Red Lessons with another fragrance review. Today we have a fragrance from the house of Le Labo. And this one is none other than the stinker itself. I don't think it's a stinker, but that's what people have said about it. Oud 27. Now before I begin, I do just want to say there is a great reviewer out there. Uh, he's getting his foot in the door, he's getting his name out there, and he's getting a little better well known. And I, he's personally one of my favorite reviewers. He has a very creative uh, twist to all of his reviews. His name is Dell. His channel's name is Bottom Note. So I'm gonna leave a link down in the description section below. Please do me a favor and do him a favor. Watch his videos, um, a few of them, all of them, whatever you wish, and uh, just let him know that I sent you and tell him that he's a great reviewer because indeed he is. So I uh, just wanted to get his name out there. So, all right, U27. Man, what does this one smell like? Uh, well, first of all, before we delve into what this one actually smells like, let me just give a little brief introductory segment, if you will, about the company itself. Now, they are located or they were established in the fragrance capital of the world, uh, Grasse. I hope I'm not mispronouncing it, Grasse, France. They have a few boutiques throughout the world. They have one in Lond uh, London, one in Paris, one in Tokyo, and then they have one in uh, New York City as well. So in the Soho section of Manhattan, which is actually where I bought this uh, particular fragrance and it was compounded by Alex. Now if you look at the camera, there's a lot of personalization going on with this. For those of you who don't know, when you order your uh, fragrances from Le Labo, they do compound them right in front of you. That guarantees that they're going to be fresh, that they haven't been sitting on a shelf for you know the entire duration of their existence, that you know they're fresh and um, they even put a quirky little expiration date on there. Now if you want, they could also put your name on there. It doesn't necessarily have to be your real name. It could be a nickname. It could be the name of your YouTube channel. Whatever you wish to put on there, uh, they'll do that. So it is, you know, made to resemble something that you find in the laboratory. After all, the name Le Labo does translate to the lab, which is an abbreviation for the laboratory. So you can imagine a bottle like this uh, sitting on a shelf among you know test tubes possibly a bunsen burner just just to give it that laboratory feel so um being that it's so personalized i think that was made in an effort to kind of just you know give into the individuality of the person so or the consumer rather so whereas you know with designer houses they release fragrances and there's really no attention to individuality and you know they want to cater to that individuality they wanted to cater to that unique aspect of you know everybody being you know a valuable asset to that company and just giving them that personalization that they may or may not uh, desire I do and uh, I'm glad that I have my name on it you know I just put my first name abbreviated my last name but I think that's enough for me so yeah let's I call this one a stinker I don't mean it I've heard other people referring to it that way, so let's just get down to what this one smells like. Now, there is Oud in this one. Of course, it's named Oud 27, but for those of you who are familiar with the Le Labo house, you would know that what it's named after isn't necessarily the star player. In my opinion, I think it's mo used more as a point of departure. So yes, there's Oud in here, but there's also Atlas Cedar, Incense, Patchouli, Saffron, Guayac Wood. Um, there actually happen to be 27 ingredients in this composition. Oud is just one of those, and that's what the number represents here, Oud 27. So there are 27 ingredients. A few more that I'm picking up are civet, ambergris, musk. This is a very animalic smelling fragrance. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, civet is not necessarily an oil. I guess it's later turned into an oil, but it's a secretion that's um, secreted from or extracted from the gland of the civet cat. Uh, so people have said it has a very fecal like smell to it. I have to agree with them. I see where they're coming from but at the same time you know I don't like the way feces smells but I love the way oud smells so yeah I can't really see eye to eye on that matter. Um, at the same time ambergris is a matter that's produced in the digestive tract of the sperm whale uh, from what I've read, it's found floating in the middle of the ocean, and when it's harvested, it's used in perfumery. And that also has an animalic smell to it. And then, of course, there's a lot of musk in this as well. Now, musk is a far more common ingredient, uh, primarily because it's mainly used as a fixative in fragrances. So a fixative is an ingredient that's used to kind of reduce the evaporation rate of the other more volatile notes, especially like 
um, citrus notes, you know, floral notes, stuff that are very volatile, that have a very small molecular composition, and they tend to not last a very long time. So with that being said, yeah, this one has a very animalic smell. Um, it happens to be my scent of the night, but I'm going to respray it just to get that opening again with that, you know, alcohol preservative in there. That <laughs> that alcohol, I think it just serves to augment that animalic smell to it. Now, of course, there's oud in this one, right? Um, it's not necessarily the star player like I mentioned previously, but it does hang around from beginning to end, from start to finish. If I could use an analogy for this one, I imagine the oud in this fragrance almost being like a security guard. You know, you go to a nightclub, there's a security guard there, picture a small nightclub, and what happens is he kind of just stands in the corner with his arms crossed like this. And he's monitoring everything that's going on. He's being very, very vigilant, moderating, you know, um, anybody that could possibly get drunk, pass out, you know, overact or whatever. So people come and go. Guests come, they intermingle, they socialize, they drink, they, whatever, they leave and new guests arrive. At the same time, the security guard is there from start to finish. And he's kind of just like standing modestly in the corner. That's what I see Oud doing in this fragrance, or what I smell Oud doing in this fragrance. That civet, you know, I think this is a fairly linear fragrance, but the civet does calm down a bit. Um, again, I think it is a star player. I get it in the very top um, of what I perceive as a, quite a linear fragrance, but it is there in the opening. So it's much more uh, prevalent in the opening, and then I think it dries down and it almost fades away. But the oud does stick around. So if you're an oud lover, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to like this one, but without a doubt, give it a try. Some people would say pass on this one. I say try because you might actually get something out of it. It may conjure up some sort of memories with you or stir some emotions that you uh, otherwise thought you would, you know, weren't able to exhibit or express. But this is a very nice fragrance. Uh, it is, despite that, despite all that I just said about it being so animalic. I actually love the way this one smells. This is a, an atomizer that I could live with under my nose. So. Uh, with that being said, down to the rating, yes, I mentioned a lot about this fragrance being unique. In the end, it earned a uniqueness rating of 9 out of 10 for me. Why I think the um, perfumer Vincent Schaller chose a direction and he headed in that direction and he didn't hesitate. And that was to create a very manly, very mature, at the same time very animalic smell that I can't really picture anyone under the age of, say, 35 or 40 wearing this fragrance. So with that being said, you do have to be very mature to wear this one. At the same time, it also allows you to be a little bit insane to wear this one. Um, I'm kind of, I might be, you know, expressing a little bit about my own true nature. But yeah, with that being said, it is a very unique scent. You know, I mean, I don't have anything else in my collection that smells quite like this one does. So for that reason, I had to give it a high mark. I couldn't hold back. Um, but I think it is fairly linear, so I couldn't necessarily grade it from that standpoint. So 9 out of 10. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Longevity, 9 out of 10 as well. You know, I get a good 8, 9. Sometimes I've gotten 10 hours out of this one. It is a fairly, fairly uh, good, long-lasting fragrance. And like I said, there's no citrus notes in this one. There are aren't too many florals not that I'm aware of so it is very woody it has that balsamic top or opening and then it's also quite resinous I believe there may be a little bit of amber in here contributing to a slight sweetness so there's nothing in the composition of this fragrance that could possibly compromise the lasting integrity of it so 9 out of 10 for longevity and I think that's an excellent mark projection yet another 9 out of 10 remaining uh, very very consistent here I walk into a room, if you're 15 feet away from me, 20 feet away from me, you're going to be able to smell this one. I exited my bathroom and somebody was sitting in my living room, which is about 20 feet away. So I just, you know, exited the room to enter another one and that person happened to smell this on me. And I got nowhere near that person. And they asked me, oh, what are you wearing? Ooh, 27. It doesn't necessarily mean that they like the smell, but they were certainly able to pick it up. So 9 out of 10 for projection versatility this is where it kind of took a plummet um i couldn't really give it anything higher than this and i'll explain why but three out of ten for versatility why like i said i can't really picture somebody under the age of 35 or 40 wearing this fragrance it is a very mature scent um it's labeled as a unisex scent 
I can see more of a man wearing this one just because of the oud. So in that sense, although it's marketed for both sexes, I see more, I can imagine more men wearing this one than women. Uh, of course, the age range, and I wouldn't wear this one outside of winter, outside of the winter season. I really don't think I would just because um, I think winter is really the only season where this one can truly express itself. Now, I know the summer is nearly ending and it is my scent of the night, so that's not to say that you can't wear this one whenever you want to. By all means, if you know if that's what makes you happy, then yeah, wear it, go ahead. But um, I can't really picture myself wearing this one outside of the winter on a consistent basis for that matter. So winter and nighttime as well. So not very versatile in that regard, but a three out of 10 will suffice. Again, you wouldn't want to get you. You wouldn't want to be caught dead wearing this to a business meeting, you know, to an interview, to work, especially if it's a close encounter type of environment. It could be very, very cloying. Of course, with you know people saying that it has a fecal smell and whatnot, so you would be taking a few chances. I, I think you could gross a few people out. But like I said, I love the way this one smells. I honestly can't get enough of it. All right, yeah, the sieve is drying down now. But yeah, I. You know, I can't get enough of it. Now, I don't know whether it's synthetic or not. Um, I can't say that I've smelled synthetic and natural civet, ambergris, and musk. Um, but it still smells very animalic. So, lastly, presentation. 10 out of 10. All Lila Bowl bottles look the same, you know. Um, but at the same time, because of that personalization. Because they put that quirky little expiration date because they're made to resemble a bottle that you would find in the laboratory and that they personalize it putting your name and the person who compounded its name on both the bottle and the box I think that says a lot in terms of presentation and that's really such a wonderful effort on their part and just the fact that they compound it right in front of you and they don't really um, they don't really do it ahead of time you know and they keep the uh, the notes or the mixture fresh in the freezer and they take it out when you know you order it so you can guarantee that it's going to be fresh and if you could tell my name is on the box as well uh, so very creative from start to finish I mean I gotta give these guys credit thank you Alex for compounding this one I think it was Isaac who compounded my patchouli 24 so thank you Isaac if you happen to be watching this one no uh, now that I think about it I think it was Natalie yeah Nat Natalie compounded it thank you Natalie for the patchouli 24 but it's an excellent house definitely deserving of your attention so not saying you should pick up U27 per se but get your nose around it see what you like everybody's perception of smell is different so give it a shot and then of course that earns this fragrance an overall mark of 40 out of 50 like I said buy try or pass definitely a try please check out bottom note I left a link in the description section down below and the question of the day is um, what's your favorite Leila Bo scent that's it fairly simple one so please comment, rate, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Stephen with another fragrance review from Red Lessons.